Hello everyone and welcome to one more episode. So yesterday OpenAI dropped ChatGPT's new feature working with apps and they announced that this will go out for Teams and Plus users today. And today I logged into my computer. I found out there's an update for ChatGPT desktop app and then I did the update and I got it basically. And I will take you through uh, step by step, I didn't touch it yet. I just wanted to show you everything live. So I'm going to set it up and we're going to try it out together to see how it works and if it's that good as they showcased. And if you're new here, my name is Samer. This channel is all about helping you do more when it comes to AI and technology with practically no coding skill required. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Do not forget to subscribe, comment and share. And with this, let's get started. Subscribe to Daddy's channel. The mic. So yesterday, this is the post that OpenAI developers account on X dropped. Um, and it says ChatGPT shaking hands basically with VS Code, Xcode, Terminal and iTerm2. ChatGPT for Mac OS can now work with apps on your desktop. In this early beta for Plus and Team users, you can let ChatGPT look at coding apps to provide better answers. So I don't know if it's something like cursor, but using something that actually controls the computer. I'm gonna show you the demo, it's less than two minutes, and then we're gonna try it, set it up and try it for ourselves. So I will play the clip and then we'll get busy. Hi, I'm Romain from OpenAI. Today, I wanna to show you a quick look at an early feature in the ChatGPT app for macOS, the ability to work directly with the applications on your computer. So imagine I'm building an iPhone app and I have my Xcode project open here. Previously, I would have had to copy my code back and forth from Xcode into ChatGPT. Well, now with this new integration that I enabled, I can click the Xcode button here and ChatGPT can immediately see the Swift code I'm working on. Check out this example. So OpenAI 01, first created this entire app from scratch to track the ISS and astronauts in space in real time. But say I want to add a new feature to this app. I can simply write, add a new screen in the center with the live stream. Now ChatGPT has the context about my existing Swift code and starts suggesting the changes. That's done, so I can just jump back in and update the code. Let's build the app, Let's command R. It's pretty cool. The live stream is right there with even a fancy icon for it. And I could keep on going and adding new features, but for now, let's ship this update. I'm gonna switch to the terminal and I'm gonna now ask ChatGPT to work with my terminal. I'm gonna tell ChatGPT to help me push this on GitHub. Now, given that ChatGPT has the context of the two apps, Xcode and the terminal, ChatGPT can help write commit messages based on the work we've just done. It can also help troubleshoot errors if you have any or install missing dependencies based on anything it sees in your terminal output. And that's it, ChatGPT helped me iterate on this app. It's like having a pair programmer by your side and you're ready to ship this update. We're always working on additional ways to make ChatGPT more useful for developers. Personally, I would love, for instance, for ChatGPT to go even further, showing me the diffs, writing the files, or potentially letting me talk out loud um, the features I'd like to add. And these are things we'll continue to explore. We hope you find this update useful and stay tuned for more. Okay, here you have it. So he did it so fast. So someone like me, not really a developer, will have to test it for myself to see how good and how useful it is um, for my use cases. So let us open ChatGPT. So if you open it, you update it, you will get the normal screen, but you will notice some changes. I'm going to start with the least obvious, actually, this one here. So if you've seen in the demo, he was opening a window, a hovering type of window, where he was exchanging with uh, ChatGPT. Well, that's a new feature here. You can click this button and that window will open up here. So let's close it for now. And then you will see uh, the internet adding files, uh, which is always there. And they've added this icon here, which is working with apps. And here you can get to enable, disable things. And there are inactive apps, which is Xcode and uh, VS Code. And we're gonna go to settings and see how to set that up. And this is something I checked out before. Apparently we need to do something in setting, which they didn't mention, but we'll do it together and then we're gonna test it. And then you have the normal uh, selection of the model. So we can, for example, choose own preview here. But before we start playing with it, let's go to settings. And if you go to settings, when I did the update, it was on default active 
activating the enable work with apps feature. So it was already activated. This is why I was able to see these things here, I guess. So if we go to manage apps, you can see none of them is active. So for VS code, we need to install extension everything else we need to enable permission so let's start with the extension for vs code okay so it takes us to this website and this is the extension so it's downloaded so this is the file that i just downloaded i guess we need to open vs code so we can uh, install that extension so now let's as they instructed let's open the uh, control panel and then we'll have to select extension install from VSIX. This is the extension of the file that we downloaded. And then it will give us um, a window where we say select that file. We go to downloads. This is the file. I'll hit install. So it completed installing the extension. We'll go back to chat GPT and extension needs update. We hit update extension auto update so we have the extension there's no update button anyways we'll go back so let's give the permissions so i'll give permission chat gpt i'm not sure if this kind of access uh, poses any cybersecurity risk if you are an expert in that area please write me a comment in the comment section should i worry or should i just uh, give all the keys away so okay modify setting let's go back to chat gpt again so now all of it is having access you can see it's all having this green color here which should mean that it can work now still giving me update uh the uh, the um, extension i'm still getting update extension i'm not gonna worry about that now because whenever i click on it i can either disable uninstall auto update which is not uh, actually pushing an update but it should be all fine okay so let's go back to chat gpt and we can close this now i selected o1 preview let me hit up that pop-up so it seems this is not working with um, o1 preview getting that pop-up okay so let me go to vs code okay interesting and let me add terminal and that's it those are the two ones i need so after i activated the vs code and terminal this is the prompt that i gave o1 preview with that new feature of work with apps activated. And that prompt is simple. In VS Code, create a new project folder, work with apps test, I'm giving it the name, and build a basic app that is a Pac-Man game I can play on my keyboard. So let's see what happens. Here goes nothing. I don't see anything happening. It's working. So let me open VS Code. Nothing happening on VS Code. Let me check terminal. Nothing happening on terminal. Let me go back here. Just give it time to do something, I guess. Okay, nothing happened with 01. Now the demo was done with 40. So let me try to do the same prompt with 40 and see if it's uh, different, if it works. So just to check, I'm allowing terminal and VS code, which is everything you need for such a project. Xcode still inactive, anyways. So I'll give it again the same prompt and run it with 40. The good thing with 40, we can actually pop up the window later on. Let's try again with 4.0. So now this one showed. It's giving me the instructions here. Okay, so let me... So I'm popping it up. Now we can go to VS Code. Now you can see this here. We have everything we need. I can make it bigger. So it, it's not like computer use. It's not actually controlling um, the application. It's just reading it, maybe and um, seeing what i have done in progress so i'm gonna follow the steps open a new folder for myself put in the code and then we'll see what we can do actually with it okay so i opened the folder let's see what's next based on its instruction so inside the folder we need to create game.js and then index.html so let's do that so this is the first one index.html that's ready and then we have game.js can just copy it create a new file and then we take this code into index.html so let's open that let's paste it i guess the next one will go into game.js we'll copy that we'll paste it so let's see how the terminal works so step five run the game install the live server extension in visual studio code if you don't already have it right click on index.html and select open with live server so let me try if it can do that for me on terminal so i'm just asking it install live server for me through terminal i don't know if this is something you can do so it, it's giving me the um okay the bash so i'll go to terminal new terminal so it's installing now the um, live server okay so i got 
errors here so i'm telling it i received errors i'm not sure if it's really understanding or getting access to to uh, the terminal i'm not sure okay so i just found out that for some reason the vs code uh, extension is stopped i reactivated it so let me try again so i'm just asking can you see the error i have on vs code terminal now like the window itself which is nothing huge um, but the window itself is nice I can run it just uh, with VS code but this is not even close to what we have with something like cursor AI not sure little disappointing or I might be doing something severely wrong and you're watching this and laughing maybe I mean I don't feel as um, limited or lost when I, I do it with cursor AI or Riplet uh, maybe others will create other videos that will show me um, what I totally missed recommendation is actually to go to the extension and do the live server I don't think uh, anything is special here honestly um, at least from my perspective so this is live server it's the difference between them okay so let me install this one it's installing and it should be running now if I go back to the project and then I cl right click on index and I actually run it with server open with live server you can see it here so okay it's like a basic basic game it worked you can see it on the screen i hope you know the whole thing i um, was excited about when it comes to using uh, this feature uh, I, I didn't see it i mean this is the normal thing you work with chat gpt you get code you put it in i i don't know let me try ask it to improve the um, html and again you can see i have everything installed so we click at this um, code and terminal are paired let me even add text edit just in case so let me ask it one more time to see if maybe i'm missing something something wasn't working before let's see can you improve the user interface and include a maze still working not able to scroll down you know it's fine it's not that i'm saying they failed it's uh, it's something they create i think as a foundation and they will start building on it i would still worry if i was cursor ai um, or VO or any of those uh, companies operating in that field. It means that OpenAI is aiming towards this very clearly, uh, but they have time, I think. So it gave me a new code. Um, this is to update game.js and then another code to update the... Let's just for the sake of the time you gave me, uh, do it and see what we got. Um, if I knew it was like this, I would have um, went actually with 01. I don't know if I can switch to 01 here. I can. So I would have worked with 01 and um, yeah, got maybe better quality um, responses. So let's update the HTML. Let's go to game.js, copy that, and then index.html, open with live server. So yeah, you have, uh, you have a maze. I don't have the enemy here. Basically someone trying to eat me and it keeps moving uh, with one click. Anyways, interesting. I don't know, honestly. I'm, I'm uh, lost. Maybe I got something really, really wrong but I don't see what's special here other than the fact that they're uh, going after this kind of um, feature into their application so at some point because they have an extension this might integrate into VS code where it actually can see the screen modify code uh, control the terminal like what you have in cursor AI replet uh, AI agent and all these companies so I'm not sure what you think little bit disappointing for me um it was like i don't know if i hyped myself when i saw that post on uh, developers maybe there's a reason why they post it on openai developers and not openai because they didn't want someone like me to go and just not understand what they're doing tell me in the comment section did it work with you did i get something really wrong when it comes to using this feature and i hope you still enjoyed me trying to use a feature maybe i'm using it in the wrong way and with this thank you for watching and goodbye subscribe to daddy's channel give me the mic